This is Eugene Pandrukovich of the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a HP Chromebook 11 CB2 uh, wrapped Chromebook computer with a cracked screen, and I'm going to show you how to replace a cracked screen on an HP Chromebook 11 CB2 Chromebook computer. Okay, a couple of items before we get started. Um, this this type of laptop turns on and off when you close and open the the lid. So you got to be careful that it's not on when you're working on it. And if it does turn on, what you want to do is just long press the power button, and it turns off. And also, it might there's some sensor magnets on the bottom. It might turn on while you're working on it, so just turn it off while you're working on it. Uh, second order of business is to look at the model number. And there's a, some writing on the blue stripe on top, and it says model CB2. That's what we're. That's the model that we're working on. Okay. Um, Next order of business is to look at the tools we're going to use for this procedure. We have a PH0 electronics screwdriver. A PH stands for Phillips and zero is the size. We have a pair of metal tweezers to manipulate cables and lift up adhesive tape or remove screws if necessary. And we have a hobby knife and that's to lift up adhesive tape and also we're going to use it to open seams and pry open some stuff, so I'll show you in just a bit. This laptop is a little bit different in how you get to the screen assembly. Uh, for most laptops, you just remove the screen bezel to get to the screen assembly. For this laptop, what we have to do first is to remove this hinge cover on the bottom, and that frees up the screen assembly to remove. So. And that's what we're going to start with first. We want to put the laptop on its side and using the hobby knife we want to open up the seam from the hinge cover to the screen assembly so we reach in and pry open the seam with the hobby knife. And you will hear some snapping sounds and you keep going like so until the whole thing is pried open. Next, what we want to do is on the edge, reach in with a hobby knife, it might be tight, and lift up the seam and reach in and lift it up like so until it's out. And same thing on the other side. Reach in and lift up. Okay, before we go any further, I'm going to show you how to snap it back on. There's a couple things that you need to watch out for. It's difficult to tell where the top and the bottom of the hinge cover is. The way to tell is you have these two small plastic tabs. The plastic tabs go on top. So, and the other thing to look at is there's a cable down here, the video cable. It's wrapped around the hinge. So when you, when you put the hinge cover back on, you want to make sure that you don't snag the cable in the hinge cover. So what you want to do is make sure that the cable is snug around the metal rod for the hinge cover. Okay, let's try to snap it back on just to see what it looks like. You put it on top and just snap it back on. And then on the bottom, you look if the seam is closed, and then if not, you just press it and snap it back on. So we're going to repeat this procedure again. We're going to snap open the hinge cover. It might be more difficult when you do it because I've opened this hinge cover a couple times so it's more loose. But just take your time on it and it'll come open. So snap open the hinge cover and reach in with a hobby knife and lift it up and reach in with a hobby knife 
The reason we use a hobby knife for this step is it's is it's thin, so it can reach in easily. And reach in and lift up and it comes off. Okay, so we put the hinge cover to the side now. The second order of business is to remove the screen bezel, the plastic cover around the screen. Uh, sometimes these have screws, but this particular one doesn't have screws, it's just on with adhesive. So we have to pretty much peel it off. And what you want to do is you put your fingertips or fingernails on the screen side, grab the bezel and gently lift up and out. You'll hear some adhesive coming off and you'll hear some popping sounds of it snapping off. So in doing this, gently work your way around the screen. If you get stuck at a point, just go past that point and come back to that point later. So keep working your way around the screen and it will slowly come off like so. And same thing at the bottom. So we've got to get a good grip again. The adhesive comes back on. So, so take your time on this. And the bezel comes off. So we put the bezel to the side. Next order of business is to remove the screen from the screen assembly. And to do that, there's four metal tabs, two on top and two on bottom, and you remove the screw from each of the tabs. And for that, we use our screwdriver. Tilt the screen back a little bit so it doesn't fall forward on you. And go one by one. One, two, three, and four. Once you remove the screws, you gently grab the screen by the, by the tabs, and if you can't reach them, just use the hobby knife to lift it up a little bit or even lift it up on top. So I was finally able to get traction when I inserted a hobby knife in the upper right hand corner. And when you do this, gently tilt the screen forward and put it down like so. For this type of screen, there's one connector on the bottom and we have to remove the connector to remove the screen from the screen assembly. To do this, we use the hobby knife to lift up the adhesive tape a little bit just enough so we can take it off with our fingers and then using our fingertips from the back of the connector we pull the let's get a close-up we pull the connector out like so before I go any further I'm going to show you how to reconnect it you slide the connector in and when you slide it in, you'll feel but not hear two clicks when the connector is properly engaged. So let's get a close up. Pause the video right here. This is what a properly engaged connector should look like. There should not be a gap in the seam between the two sides of the connection. The two sides of the connection should be flush with each other. All right, so let's take it out again. And let's take a look at the screen. While doing this, Make sure you don't press accidentally this power button because the laptop will turn on. And if you do press it, just do a long press to turn off. Okay, so let's take a look at this screen. This screen, it's a little bit, it's different than most other Chromebook computers. As of um, late 2014, the HP Chromebook 11 is the only mainstream Chromebook that uses this particular screen. More laptops or computers may use it 
after after this, but right now this is the only one that uses it. Uh, the thing that makes this screen special, it's called a IPS screen. IPS stands for in-plane switching, and it's different than the standard TN twisted pneumatic screens that are used in most other Chromebooks. And this screen is supposed to reproduce more accurate colors. So a regular 11.6 inch LED slim screen will work with this laptop if you connect it but it will not fit properly in this screen assembly so it cannot properly fit it so i would recommend getting this exact screen as a replacement let's look at the part number for this the part number for this is lpwh6 sla1 you have to get the whole part number correctly to get this right screen LPWH6 SLA1. Down the road, there might be other part numbers that are compatible, but start with this part number. Okay, we at Screen Surgeons do have this screen, exact screen, available for sale. And to buy from us, you go to www.screensurgeons.com. Uh, there will be a short form for you to fill out with your laptop model and your contact info and that will guide you to the buy the right screen online. If you're looking to do this for a school or a school district, uh, please contact us directly. We fix screens at gmail.com for bulk pricing and more information. Uh, for the screens that you order from us, you get this exact toolkit for free. It comes for free with the screen and ship it, it ships free in the continental United States using priority mail so you'll get your screen in two or three days or less. If you live outside of the United States we ship to most countries around the world just follow the regular checkout procedure and it will find your country. We also offer a two-year warranty and all our screens and also free email technical support. If you have any problems with the installation please send us email and we'll walk you through it. Okay once you do get your screen in, connect the connector as I showed you. Once you uh, mount the screen, make sure that this part, this video cable part, is flush with the back of the screen so it doesn't fall off, stick forward. And mount the screen into the screen assembly, make sure it's fitting properly. Put the two screws in at the top, and the two screws in at the bottom, snap the screen bezel back on and snap the hinge cover back on and you should be good to go. Okay, uh, that's it. Once again, my name is Eugene Panritkovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much and good luck.